Hi there, welcome. I'm Maria, I'm coming to you from Denmark and this is my YouTube channel all about knitting but it could also be other crafts like crocheting, sewing, also a little bit painting sometimes but yeah, mostly knitting. So you can find me on Instagram as fiberwolfco so if you want to you can go there and check me out. I'm really active mostly on stories but I will be better to post some post as well on my grid yeah so I will start to show you a little bit of what's on my needles so welcome so at the moment I am knitting a test knit for so sweet violet uh, Jules she also has a podcast here on YouTube and she's also on Instagram and I will put it on the screen so you can see so this is the toe of my second sock the first one is already finished and as it's a test knit it's of course secret but you can see the back of the sock here i will show you more when i can so yeah that's all from stash um i will let you know again this yarn is a hand dyed yarn by myself it's dyed with avocado and it has a stolina in it i'm not sure if you can see that on here but it has a lot of stolina in it and the toe here is a beehive yarns um sock set and the sock set is so gorgeous i'm gonna show you i'll put on the screen what the name of this color are because i can't remember <laughs> and i don't have the yarn label at hand but yeah that is really really stunning and yeah other things that's on my needles is um the half plus half wrap by Pearl Soho and a lot of people are knitting it because it's um, uh, what do you call a knit along <laughs> I was really couldn't remember the name there so I'm using this beautiful color which is birch from Sweet Georgia Yarns it's right here and this yarn, which is also Sweet Georgia, and I don't remember the name of this one. I can't seem to find the yarn label anywhere. I will try to look it up. But at least these two, and I was lucky enough to get these two from a yarn swap with a beautiful friend of mine. She's become a really good friend. Her name is Debbie, and she's also here on YouTube. She's um, The Loving Path. I will link it. I will sh put it on the screen so you know where you can find her. She also dyes her own yarn, not this one, but she has some stunning, stunning yarn. I will let you know if you need some stunning yarn. She's, in, she's based in Canada, so if you're in Canada or USA, definitely check her out. She has the most stunning yarn. So yeah, um, another thing I have on my needles is um, a hat for my boyfriend. So it's the hipster hat by Petit Knit it's knit up in a blue yarn which is a leftover from a sweater that I just knit him and I will show you that another day because he's wearing it and he's out of the house so it's um, the yarn is Pernilla from Phil Colana it's um... oh, I'll try to see if I can find another one. Oh, it's right here it's 100% Peruvian Highland wool. I'm not pronouncing that right, am I? So it's really, really beautiful. And I just finished a hat for my youngest daughter. I have three daughters. I have Bianca, who is 10 years old. I have Nova, which is going to be nine in May. And I have Mia. She's going to be two in July, 1st of July this summer. So there's a big age gap between the two oldest and the youngest, but the two oldest are really close to age. So yeah, it's usually busy, busy here, but I will put a photo in here of my youngest daughter hat so you can see how it's on. And this hat you can knit for all the family members. There's, I think, four sizes, so it's really good. So yeah, that's on my needles. And another one I have on my hook, not needle, <laughs> is my um, granny stripe blanket. 
and it's the one that I think most people use from Attic 24. So I will grab that. Actually, I'm in the middle of the row and this granny stripe blanket is humongous. So it takes me a lot of time to knit just one row because it's gonna fit on our big size bed. And you can see, okay, I'm not that far into the first or the this row, but yeah, it takes me a while to to crochet the <laughs> just one row of this one because it's so huge. So <clears throat> this has been in the making for yeah a long long time, maybe since 2016 or something. But the reason I haven't gotten too far on it because it it doesn't get a lot of attention, unfortunately. And I really want it in a certain color. So these are like pastel colors and I want to keep it that way. I really like the subtle, um, yeah, not too color, yeah, bright colors. Because um, I want to put it on our bed and I really want our bed or a bedroom to be a calm place to come into. So um, last year I bought two advent calendars from I bought one from Elderflower Stitches and one from Dandelion and Dogwood and they both have like really beautiful pastel-y colors so I definitely want to put all of those in here so I'll just have to see if I can mix it up with a little bit different yarns as well so it's not just a color block of Elderflower or a color block of Dandelion Dogwood so but I really really enjoy this and the yarn from Elderflower Stitches it smells so good. So this whole project smells of that. So Susie, if you want to let me know what kind of yarn soap you're using, let me know because it smells divine. With that granny stripe blanket, I really, really, really want another granny stripe blanket, but not as huge. <laughs> so I thought, because I don't use a whole 20 gram uh, mini for one row, for that one I thought I'm gonna do a mini one for my baby Mia so I cast it on do you say that in crochet I'm not really sure uh, one for Mia and this is how far I am it's not as big as my my wingspan or <laughs> what would you say but it's um it's big enough that she can have it comfortably in her stroller or in her, in her bed and when she gets older it would even be like a mini blanket she could have in her car or whatever when she gets older i think she will use it as well but this is like all the pastel -y colors from the advent calendars and i want to keep it that way <laughs> so i hopefully have enough yarn so that it's going to be a blanket for mia and when mia was um having her celebration of her name like you can call it a christening but it's not a christening because we're not christians but we celebrate her getting her name she got a, a little gift from one of my friends it's um this cute little mouse it's a danish brand called my leg which have like mouse they have rabbits i, I they have so much cute stuff and I actually bought a little bag for Mia, which is coming next week, I hope, where she can put her little mouse and all the stuff that goes with the mouse and she can carry it around and bring with her if we go somewhere and we need to have something for her to play with. So yeah, I'm hoping to have some more stuff for this little mouse. So I actually I started a little granny square blanket for the mouse as well. <laughs> Isn't this cute? I just love it. I love the cute little things for for the little mouse. So hopefully Mia, she's gonna play with that more. She used to play a lot with it when she was a little bit smaller. She used to take it anywhere. She's like, where's my mouse? And she would, well, she couldn't really talk, but she said a similarity to mouse in, in Danish and she would go look for it. So yeah, now she's 20 months and she's blabbering her way she's saying all the words not perfectly but i understand her 
as a mother yeah yeah you know what i mean if you have kids so yeah that's what's on my needles and on my hooks and oh i will let you know i use these crochet hooks so i hope you can see the sizes of these and usually i crochet with a different um hook these are from clover and the other ones are also from clover which are called um amour and i can't remember the name of these ones but um i hurt my i hurt my arm back in 2018 i broke it and i had to do a whole year of um rehabilitation for my arm because i couldn't lift anything and i couldn't knit for a long time so at the moment these are the ones are the best for my arm so i bought some of these and yeah they're really good so and i'm using the smaller needle for baby mia's blanket and the uh, mouse blanket and the big one for my own granny stripe blanket yeah so next up is soon to be cast on so my boyfriend has two sweaters that i knit for him one that i just finished here in was it december or yeah i can't really remember but it's a blue one like the one i showed you from uh, panilla the yarn but it's held double with tilia which also is a filcolana yarn so it's these two together so uh, i will show you that because he's wearing it today so i couldn't show you he went out the door before i could find it and take a picture or show you <laughs> but he wanted another sweater so he sat down with me and we looked on instagram we looked on ravelry and we looked on the web just to see what kind of sweater he really wanted and he wanted a little bit more rustic sweater that has like a denser fabric that holds up a little bit more and yeah he chose and i will see show you here it's from it's like um it's from a norwegian brand of yarn they also make patterns they make pattern books and this is the one it's like an icelandic sweater it's called and it's from this magazine and um the yarn that's suggested for the original is an alpaca yarn and i know that alpaca is um not as dense as he really wanted but they suggest a different yarn or they suggest a few different ones and the one that we ended up with is Pegunt which is 100% Norwegian wool and I'm Norwegian ah, <laughs> I didn't tell you that did I um, so for me it's really nice to find a Norwegian yarn for him to knit a sweater in and it's kind of like a, a classic Norwegian sweater even though it's called Icelandic sweater sweater. I'm guessing it's also a classic Icelandic sweater. Um, so yeah, that will be coming up for him. I have to adjust the size, so I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna do that because it has the patterns in it, but he's smaller in the waist and bigger at the chest. So I'm trying to figure out how we're gonna do that because he doesn't want the same size on the by the chest down by his waist he wants it to be more fitted so but this yarn is like a rustic yarn but it's not too rustic it's quite soft and it actually made me want to knit something in this colorway for myself as well and it's not it's not expensive yarn it's quite affordable so i would love to knit up something in this I'm trying to figure out what because I at the moment I know um, B Mandarin's Melody Hoffman she's really popular at the moment and she and I know why because her designs are so stunning so I would definitely want to knit tulip I want to knit offering of trees yeah more of her designs I would definitely want to knit for myself so maybe I'll try to figure out what I can knit with maybe this yarn or a similar for yeah for some dream knitting for myself so that's coming up um also coming up are march socks 
So I'm knitting socks uh, for the um, Rainbow Sock Chronicles, which are made or made is um, a sock knitting. What's it called? Knit along <laughs> from Kelly from Lay Family Yarns and Jules from So Sweet Violet. And I've knitted my January socks and I've knitted my February socks and my March socks. I ordered a kit from Kelly Lay Family Yarns. And I know it's on the way. Unfortunately, I ordered it long before Brexit, but it got sent back for some weird reason. And it's sent back to me now and I have to pay taxes. It's actually not the taxes that's expensive. It's the fee that they make because they're doing the import for you. And if I had known, I would have done the import myself. But I'd be wiser next time because the import taxes is not that expensive but yeah so that's what's soon to be cast on and i will go further to my finished objects so two seconds as i said i'm knitting the rainbow chronicles knit along so my january socks are these socks and these are the Little Rabbit Socks by Jules, So Sweet Violet. And these are all made from stash. I'm trying to do all knitting from stash. Of course, this yarn's not from stash, but my boyfriend bought that. Does that count? <laughs> so these are all from stash. They're minis, they're leftovers. So yeah um really really enjoy these socks and i love these little bunny tails on the back here which are made of floof yarn yeah i will link all the ravelry project pages for the projects that i'm showing you but if you are not safe on ravelry please if there's some information you want please let me know if, even in the comments or on instagram and I will definitely send it for you because I know Ravel is not a safe safe space for everyone. So let me know. Those were my January socks. And my February socks is um, stranded knitting. And I never done that with socks before. So this was my first try. I've done mittens before, so it's quite similar. But I was scared that it wasn't going to fit over my wrist, but it does fit quite nicely I think and they're the most thick socks I've ever knitted for myself even though it's like a light fingering weight yarn so the yarn here is also from Stash I'm not gonna tell you what it is I have it on my Ravelry page but the company it's not a company I support so it's just because I have it in Stash I'm gonna knit it up because I don't want to uh, leave it to waste so the heel on this one is really nice, I think. The pattern from this is um, Trailing Daisies. It's by a Finnish designer and it's free. This pattern is free. It's a Finnish designer called, oh, please, Tina Ku. And if it's not pronounced right, I'm really sorry. I will put it on the screen. But it's a really beautiful sock and it's addictive. Like, you just want to knit one more row, one more row. Kind of like with stripes so i knit a lot of socks but um these were really i would i would try to knit this again in a different color once so yeah and so sweet violet jewels i do um some test knitting for her with a group of beautiful kind ladies and i love 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 being a test knitter and i test knit a lot for a lot of people actually and I enjoy it, but um, I knit these socks last year, I can't remember, before summer maybe, or I knit one sock, sorry, <laughs> for test knit, because they're, they're both the same sock. So it's the Winterbird socks, also by Jules. It's really, really pretty with these kind of like small birds. I think it's so beautiful. And this heel is also really beautiful with the little slip stitches. So I finished the second one. I finished here in December, I think. <laughs> so now I have two. Yay! <laughs> well, I'll put that in my 
box of socks. So yeah, and uh, one of my favorite Norwegian designers called um, Aftenstrik. I will put that on the screen because it's not really, it's a Norwegian word, yeah? <clears throat> she made, um, how would you say this? Cooperation with uh, no another Norwegian big brand called Rauma. And she made this magazine with some beautiful, beautiful uh, patterns in her. And this one I knitted so fast. <laughs> So, ah, here it is, some rabbit ears, it's gonna go like this, and I knit this for, for Mia, and I knit a, another one as well, <laughs> so I have two, and actually I thought I was gonna just give it to some friends of ours, who have a daughter, she's gonna be three here soon, but my middle daughter, Nova, she was saying, oh mom, can I please have one? So we'll have to see if she keeps one. I'm not sure how much she's going to use it. So we'll have to see. And um, these are knitting, knitted uh, on um, big needles. And with a uh, yarn, I will show you. From Rauma. This one. I hope it's showing up. It's called Vams. I will <laughs> put it down bar. Um, they... The yarn is really good for felting. So these have actually been in the washing machine with some clothes and it's really felted up nice. I think maybe they could felt a little bit more, but I can definitely put it in the machine another time. But I feel it's really good and it's going to be warm. And it's so much softer now after it's been felted than when you're knitting with it. So I really enjoyed that. And in this magazine there's uh, a lot of more uh, beautiful beautiful patterns like this little bag which can be tied i hope you see this and also there's there's a lot of beautiful patterns i will link the magazine so you can look at it yourself and i will show you a blanket in here that i really really want to knit up but I think maybe I want to knit it up in a different yarn because I like rustic yarns, but for a blanket, for if I'm gonna put it on the couch with the kids, it, it needs to be a little bit more soft. So, but this is the blanket. It has a lot of beautiful colors in it. Oh, I want to knit this. I need to knit this. Yeah, it will happen someday, someday. I think, yeah, that's it for that. I've um, knitted another test knit uh, for a Danish designer. She's called Jormo uh, Her name is Gide. And she has this kind of like a series of um, uh, patterns. And this is called uh, Lille Rille Bjorn Dracht. And I will put it on the screen and I will link her so you can go see it. Um, the yarn I got is Bunst, so I got it for free. The yarn is from a um, Danish hand dyer called Hand Dye uh, DK. And this is not the first time I knitted in this colorway, which is 017. But it's the first time I knitted with this um, uh, type of yarn, which is called 220 Merino, if I'm not wrong. I will put it on the screen. So this is the suit. It's a baby suit for Mia. And I need to sew some buttons on here. But because of the situation, which you all know, um, everything's been closed in Denmark since before Christmas. So I haven't been anywhere. And they opened up, was it 1st of March? And I didn't want to be the one who rushed to the store because I think a lot of people rush to the store, so I will wait a little bit longer and try to stay safe and stay home and I will go find some buttons when, as soon as I feel okay to go. But it has these, it has a hoodie with some small ears, aren't they cute? 
So this is a little bit big for Mia, but I will save it for next winter. So she'll have one next winter as well. I really enjoyed that project. So I will definitely link that for you so you can see. I think the pattern is soon on the way and there's a jacket as well. If you don't want to knit the suit, there's a jacket. There's also a hat in that series, I know. So yeah, you can definitely check her out. She has beautiful, beautiful patterns. I'm not sure if they're in English, but I will let you know. So yeah, I think that's all that I have this episode. And I definitely have a lot more to show you. But oh, wait, I have some sewing. I forgot. I have some sewing. So uh, in 2020, we moved to Portugal, me and my boyfriend and our three kids. And um, when we were down there, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do because all my yarn stash was back in Denmark. <laughs> it was in a storage unit and I couldn't get to it. Of course, I brought some yarn, of course, but I'm a fast knitter, so <laughs> it actually disappeared quite fast. But in Portugal, you have a beautiful, beautiful store called Retrosario um, Pomar. Am I saying that right? Retrosario Rosa Pomar? Well, I will write it down here. Um, she has a beautiful yarn store. And if you ever go to Lisbon, I will definitely check her out. And it's quite hard to find the store. So if you need help with that, let me know. I will guide you. Um, it's a beautiful store. She has her own yarn made from Portuguese wool. So of course I bought some yarn from her. And when we went to lockdown, we went to lockdown quite fast in Portugal. We moved there in February and in early March, we started with the lockdown for some, uh, some stuff, not everything, but so if I needed something, I usually just bought it online and got it delivered to the house. So I know, noticed that Jewel from So Sweet Violet, she posted some kits for English paper piecing. So I got this really beautiful box from her and it has a kit like for for English paper piecing. There was papers in here, there's fabrics, there's a glue pen and yeah, uh, there's a needle and thread. So I should have started this back in Portugal, but I didn't. And I just did it like a couple of days ago and I did my first paper piercing. So have a look at this. Ah, I really enjoyed this. And I actually used Jules's tutorial she has here on YouTube. I will link that. It's um, quite easy to follow and has some really nice stitching on the back, I think. I hope you can see that. I used a glue pen to glue this, the, what's it called? Pentagons? No, I, I'm confused now. Can't remember. Hexagons. Sorry. There you go. Hexagons on there. And I'm not sure what I'm going to use this for. But at the moment, it's just sitting in the shelf right here with, yeah, some of my other stuff. So hopefully I'll fi figure out something I can use that for later. But yeah, I think that's all I have for today. Now I don't have any more surprises of my sleeves. But um, yeah, if you like that, I hope you will come back. And I, if you like it, please hit the like button and... If you want to subscribe, do that. I will have another video soon. I promise. I will maybe do some vlog as well because I love vlogging. And yeah, thank you for watching if you watched it till now. And I will see you soon. Bye.